Okay, here's a video on algebra. Part 1, we'll talk about linear equations and linear functions. So let's look at an example right away. Here we have a question. We'll put this question right here. Let's put that over. Okay. Now you can see right away, if you see a 2 on top of a variable, anything greater than 1, then you know it's not linear right away. This will be somewhat like a quadratic equation because it has a 2 on it. But let's look at it anyway. What, what can we do if we see something like this? Well, first of all, you see these parentheses, so we can distribute. And that's what I did here. We distribute the 6. Right? It means we're multiplying. So 6 times 2x squared is 12x squared. 6 times 5 is 30. And then we bring everything else down. So now we have this. So now what we can do is combine like terms. Okay, so it's, let's just go over what like terms are very quickly. So you should know by now that if you had an x plus x squared, you can't combine them because they're not like terms. Like terms have the same letter and the same exponent. So if it was x plus x, we can combine that. We can get 2x. And x squared plus x squared will have 2x squared. Now, don't confuse adding with multiplication. So, again, we had x plus x, we said is 2x, but x times x is x squared. So, remember that. Keep that in mind. Now, you can combine um, multiplication, both the addition or subtraction. They have to have the same term. Same with constants. Like, for example, we can combine a 7 plus a 2. But we can't combine 7 plus x. Can't combine that. So remember that. So going back now, we had this equation. We distributed, and we got this. So here we are right now. Remember, 6 times 2 is 12. 12x 12 squared. 6 times 5 is 30. Now we combine like terms. We can combine the constants, 30 minus 8, and we get 22. We can combine 12x squared and 2x squared, and we get 14x squared. So now we're left with this. So basically, we're trying to solve for x. In this case, we also want to know what x squared is. And if we know what x squared is, we can get x. So again, remember, because it says x squared, this is not a linear equation. But we can still solve for this. So now we have this. And you should rewind the tape if you didn't understand how we got this part. Okay, so now we're here. We had this part here. I'm going to minus out the constants. Now you can also minus out these terms here, 14x squared or 10x squared. Whatever one you want to do first, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter if you want to minus the 22 out or minus the 7 first. It doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer. Most of the time, what students do is they minus the smaller number. So I'm going to minus the 7. Okay, so if I minus the 7 on this side, I have to minus it on that side. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. Again, I didn't have to start with 7. I could have minus the 10x squared out, or I could have minus the 14x squared out, or I could have minus the 22 out. It doesn't matter. Okay? So if I minus the 7 on both sides, this is what I'm left with now. right here. So now we want to get x squared alone. That's the purpose of what we're trying to do here. So I'm going to minus the 14x squared out. Minus 14x squared. Now if I minus the 10x squared, I'll get a 0. We don't want that. You never want a 0 on this side when we're talking about linear equations. Even though we know with the x squared it's not linear. So I minus the 14 out on both sides and this is what we're left with. Now, if I divide out the negative 4, I want to do the opposite operations on both sides, we'll get our answer. And we know that 15 over negative 4 equals x squared. This is not a linear equation. But if you want to find what x was, you just get the square root of 15 over negative 4. And that'll give you what x is. 
So try this one on your own. See what you get. So again, pause the tape, see what you get. Okay, so again, we should distribute. Right, so we'll have, don't forget the negative. So it's negative 21x squared. A negative times a negative is positive, so it'll be 28. Minus 8 plus 4x squared. Just bringing everything else down. So that's you. That's what you should have right now. So we distributed. Now we should combine like terms. So we can combine the 21x squared and the plus 4x squared. And what would you get? Hey, you'll have a negative 17x squared. And then you can combine the 28 minus the 8. And you'll have a plus 20. And bring this down. Okay. Now you can minus the constants or the variables. So here I'll add 9 because you want to do the opposite operation of a minus 9. I'll add 9 on both sides. Bring everything else down. Okay. Now what should we do? Okay, let's get rid of that 17x squared by adding it. Okay, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And what would be our answer be? So we're going to bring down the 29. And we have a 3x squared plus a 17x squared. So 29 equals 20x squared. Divide out the 20 on both sides. And 29 over 20 equals x squared. And again, the fine x, just square root 29 over 20. Now let's solve an equation. We've been solving equations. Now we see a linear equation. How do you know it's a linear equation? Well, the x doesn't have a 2, right? It doesn't have an exponent bigger than 1. So this is the same thing. We have to distribute. We're going to distribute the four-thirds on both sides. Well, not on both sides, in the parentheses. So what would you get if you did that? Four-thirds times x is four-thirds x. And four-thirds times 10 over 8 is 40 over 24. So, so far we got that. Now, with any linear equation, we're trying to solve for x. We want x by itself. So we get rid of any of the plus or minuses first. So we're going to minus, because we have a plus, 40 over 24 on both sides. So here we're going to have 25 over 1. You can put it over 1 minus a negative 40 over 24. Actually, it's minus 40 over 24. Get rid of that. You're minusing 40 over 24, so you're minusing it. But when you do minus, it becomes addition. Remember, keep change, change. So this will be a negative anyway. That is a quick way of doing this. You can multiply and then multiply diagonally. So 1 times 24 is 24. And then 24 times 25 plus 1 times negative 40. 25 times 24 is 600. And we want to plus 1 times negative 40 is negative 40. So now 600 plus negative 40 over here we'll have 560 over 24 so x we have 4 thirds x equals 560 over 24 Bring that over. you could also have reduced this if you want to make it easier so we're trying to find x so I'm going to divide 4 thirds on both sides we have this complex fraction here. And you can reduce this if you want also. So we'll bring this over. The top number is always first. Remember that. So we're dividing 4 thirds. But remember with division you flip the last fraction. And that will give us our answer. Put the time sign there. Now you could, again, simplify this. 4 goes into 560 
140 times, and 4 goes in the 4 once, so that makes that easier. And you know 3 goes in the 24 8 times, 3 goes in the 3 once, and you're left with 140 over 8. And we know 140 over 8, so now we know that x would be 140 over 8, or you can reduce it, so x would be 17.5. I mean, so four eighths is one half, so that's why it's seventeen point five. So again, rewind the tape if you didn't understand how we did that. Again, minusing, we minused it. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other, and we minused twenty five minus forty over twenty four. And we got this big answer here, and we could have reduced if we wanted to make it easier. Sometimes it is easier to reduce things so you don't have these big numbers. So rewind the tape on how we did that and see if you can do this one now. So again, you have to distribute here. Distribute that out. So you have 715x and then you're timesing 715 times 30 over 14. So 7 times 30, so plus that, is 210. 15 times 14 is also 210. Equals 20. So that, that's basically just 1. So it's 715x plus 1 equals 20. Okay, now we want to get x by itself. We're going to minus the 1 on both sides. And we have 7 over 15x, don't forget the x, equals 19. So now we have multiplication here, 715 times x, so we're going to divide 715 on both sides. So we'll bring this up a little, erase this. So we'll divide the 715 on both sides. x is now alone, so x is 19 over 715. Bring that up so you see it. Complex fraction. So the 19 is first, 19 over 1 divided by... 7 fifteenths becomes 19 over 1 times 15 over 7. So 19 times 15 is 285. So we can say x equals 285. We'll bring it over here. We can say x equals 285 like times over 7. And you can simplify that if you need to. Now what if you have an equation no numbers. Just have something like this. Solve each equation for the given variable. Solve for h. What is h? Well, again, we're doing the same thing here. We want to solve for h, so we want h alone. We can just... And this is an l, not a 1. Just l. So, let's say here we have v, which could be volume. Volume is length times width times height. So, what is, what if, what is the height? So we divide the length oh, and the width on both sides. Volume divided by length times width should equal height. Well, let's see if that's true. Let's say you had um, the volume of this prism. And we had, let's say it was uh, the length of oh, whatever, 4, 3, and the height of 2. So we know the volume is 24 units cubed, volume's always cubed. So we can say now that 24 over length times width, 12, does that equal the height of 2? Yes. So here we had length times width, so we divided length times width on both sides, and this is what, this how we solve for h. By the way, we can do it with anyone. Uh, let's say we had... Um, volume equals length with height and we want to find um, let's say they said solve for w solve for w so again length this is multiplication so it's commutative you could put it any way you want you can put the length the height and the width at the end and just do it like that and so volume over length times height would equal w and the same go with length okay Let's see, try this one now. Solve for R. What would that mean? 
Okay, again, we want r squared. We want r alone, so we're going to divide out the, the pi on both sides. And a over pi equals r squared. So how can we get r? We did this before. If a over pi equals r squared, then the square root of a over pi would equal r. Okay. All right, in our next video, in part two, we'll talk about linear functions.